This is the way. Yes, it is a fun reference. Yes, I do love Star Wars. But it's also a biblical reference. This is the way. Right? We're talking about following the way of Jesus. Because in the book of Acts, the Apostle Paul refers so many times to the fact that they are followers of the way. Right? And so we're talking about what is the way? What does it mean to follow the way of Jesus? And so we've been talking about discipleship. Well, what does it look like to be a disciple? What does it look like to be a follower? And we kind of broke it down that to be a disciple or follower in Hebrew is called being a Talmudim. And it means to be someone who is not only going with the rabbi, but they're trying to become like their rabbi, and they're trying to do the things their rabbi does. And so us as followers of Jesus, as people who say Jesus is the one we are going after, Jesus is the way we are pursuing, when we make that declaration, when we make that commitment to him, we are saying that we want to be people who follow him, who become like him, and who do the things that he does. We don't want to be people who just believe, we want to be people, be people who believe and follow. And that requires something. Right? Oh, wow. Well, okay. I'm here to wake you up just in case. That requires something. Guess what, right? Following Jesus isn't always easy. It's not always the most comfortable thing. Right? It's not always the most simple. And so in order to be with Jesus, what we're focusing on right now, the, the, uh, the idea of abiding. And you had homework this last week. You were supposed to practice abiding. You were supposed to practice putting away your phone, putting away your devices, putting distractions away. And we, we talked about how abiding with Christ doesn't have to do with adding something to your life. It often has to do with you laying something down to focus on him. Come on. How many of you are busy? Wow. Oh, okay. There are a few of you. Okay. I am. Yeah, I get it. I'm busy, right? Life is crazy. And we're not talking about you, like, hey, this is another thing to add to your to-do list. No, no, we're saying that you actually have to take a moment, put your to-do list aside, and say, Jesus, I'm here to connect with you. I'm here to abide with you. I'm here to spend time with you. And the goal is to get to the place where we are constantly in communion. We are constantly abiding with him. But but we're we're starting out on the journey here, right? We're taking steps. And, And the truth is, to abide often means we have to deny ourselves. Has anyone ever denied themselves before? Has anyone ever? Yeah, come on. I think we all know that's part of the Christian life. It's part of the stuff that we are called to do. But something that Jesus actually tells us to do in Matthew 16, 24, it goes, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Right? It's it's a very popular scripture. It's one you've probably heard before. But the thing is, is that following Christ often means we have to deny ourselves. And that's not a bad thing. You know, denying yourself isn't punishing yourself. Denying yourself isn't putting yourself down. Denying yourself is realizing that there are many distractions in this world we live in. In this digital age that we exist in, there are so many things. I mean, does anyone have one of these? Like, oh my goodness. Do you know my, the news like vibrates to let me know, hey, there's a new news story. And I try to silence it. And messenger wants to go off. And people are texting. Like, this is distraction central, right? So I can try to get rid of it. I'm not going to throw it. It's already broken. i got to be nice to it, right? But I can try to get rid of that. But then we also, we have children. We have jobs. We have friends. We have family. We have so many things that want our attention. And so to deny ourselves usually most often means that you need to put something down. You get the choice to say no to something to turn and follow Christ. And in fact, when we read this verse, I know that a lot of us understand, or we have a basic understanding, I'll say, of what it means to be crucified, because we've seen movies, we've seen the Passion of the Cross, maybe we've done some research on our own, but you need to understand that when Jesus is saying this to his Jewish, his Hebrew audience, this would have been a shocking statement to them, because he's telling them, you need to deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me, and they all knew what it meant to be crucified. This was a very real thing for them. It was part of their reality. They understood that it was the worst form of capital punishment that existed. In fact, it was so horrible, a Roman was not even allowed to be crucified. It was saved for the worst of the worst. And what would happen is someone would be brought before a judge, and if they were declared guilty, the crossbeam would be given to them, and they would have to carry it 
all the way through the city to the edge of town where they will be crucified. And people would line the streets and watch as this person carried it. They were called a dead man walking. And people would watch them walk, and it was to sh- heap shame and humiliation upon them. It was so people would point and go, you know, this is, don't disobey, right? This is what happens when you do something wrong. So then we have, G- you know, meek and mild Jesus, sweet, loving Jesus, who, who gets up to them and goes, you need to basically be crucified. Pick up your cross. Th- this wasn't just some casual statement to them. This would have been something that for many of them would have shook them to the core. They would have been like, that, that's not a small thing. Because to pick up my cross means people will know that I am following you. That people will see that I am going after you. It will make me stick out. It won't make me be able to always blend into the crowd. Can I tell you something? That when we deny ourselves and pick up our crosses, we're choosing to sacrifice comfort for his will. And when you choose to sacrifice comfort, when you choose to deny yourself, always being comfortable to go after him, it makes you stick out sometimes. Because Jesus didn't always blend in. In fact, I don't really think he ever did. If you ever go read your Bible, right, if you take time to kind of dig through the Gospels, Jesus wasn't that guy who was just kind of on the edges blending in. No, he made a ruckus everywhere he went. He was offensive. Come on, right? I mean, he healed somebody on the Sabbath. How dare he? Right? He let his disciples take grain out. Right? He forgave people's sins. I mean, he ate with sinners. Everything Jesus did was offensive to the way of culture in the world. And so, so often when we have to deny ourselves, what we're saying is, I'm going to deny my ability to be comfortable in order for the kingdom to come. Because so often, my comfort holds me back from pursuing the greater things of God. I want to be able to go out on the street or be able to walk into a restaurant and just take a moment and connect with Jesus. Before I walk into the restaurant, you should try this. I want to go, before I walk into a restaurant, just take a moment. Okay, God, I'm going to to be aware of your presence. I'm going to be aware of what you're doing. I'm going to take you in with me when I go sit down and eat this delicious burger. That's what my wife is. Oh. (laughs) Okay, we're going to pause. Sorry. Sorry. I just almost blurted it out, so I'm just, I already told her we're going to do it. So Stephanie is with child. She is pregnant. Woo! She's hiding today, so you can't see her. her, her she's just starting to show. And so we just need to announce it now before you all start wondering if you can ask that awkward question or not. So to save you all that little moment, yes, my wife is pregnant. So we are excited. We're expecting in July. You can give her a high five. You are not allowed to come and put your hand on her belly without permission. All right? If you do that, she has permission to slap you. So just realize you're taking a risk. Um, And she won't actually, you know, she's too loving and kind. But yes, we are expecting number two here in July. So woo, woo, woo. Thank you, Jesus. So everything she is craving right now, that's what I was saying and realizing, oh, no, I'm um, you know, I've already told her I was going to tell you all today, so it's fine. But everything she is craving right now is burgers, right? It's all this, this really fried, delicious food. You know, it's like the stuff that I want to eat, but I shouldn't eat all the time. That's everything she wants, right? So before we go into a place, take a moment, connect with Jesus, abide, focus on his presence, and then realize I am not going into this restaurant just by myself. I'm going with the kingdom of heaven. I'm going with the presence of God. You see, abiding is trying to, it's me getting to this place where I don't allow the confusion and the loud things of the world to distract me from what he is trying to do. Can I just encourage you right now? God is moving. God is healing. There are amazing things happening in the world. I mean, did you see that picture of all those people in Nepal coming? Did you hear what he's saying? People are being healed. People are being touched. God wants to use you. And we have the choice and the option right now to go from just being people who believe to people who go, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to deny myself. I'm going to deny my timeline of how I think things should look right now in my life. I'm going to deny myself maybe always coming home and just switching on Netflix first thing or sitting down with my phone and going through, you know, Instagram or Facebook or TikTok or whatever the newest one is, you know, for hours on. No, no. I'm going to deny myself to take time for Jesus. 
And as you practice that, as you take time for that, I'm going to encourage you, it becomes more natural. Because some of you are saying, I, I've tried to do that. I've tried to take time. I've tried, you know, I, I've done all these different things. I've tried these different programs. I, I want to encourage you right now, right, that, that the goal is for this to be constant. Right. But I want you to take a step this week. I want you to take a step and go, okay, Jesus, I'm here for you. Whatever it looks like, whatever you want to do, I want to connect with you. I want to lay down the things that I want in this moment to connect with what you're doing in this season. Can I, just encourage, I want to encourage you right now. Some of you need to deny. Some of you need to deny your desires and your wants for what you think your life should look like right now in this season. I want to encourage you. When you deny yourself, when you lay down, this is what I think my life should look like, and instead you go, what are you saying right now for my life? it will shift the atmosphere around you. And it will shift the circumstances you're in. Can I just tell you right now, some of you this week, you need to take some time and go, what am I allowing to have a louder voice in my life than his? And those are the things you gotta start denying. Sometimes it's your fears. Sometimes it's even your desires. Maybe you thought you would be married by now. Maybe you thought you would have kids by now. Maybe you thought you'd be in your career and doing wonderful by now. No matter what it is, Lay it down and invite him to tell you what he's doing. It's going to change something. It's going to shift something. I should probably look at my notes, make sure I'm on track here. No, we're good. We're doing good. We're doing good, right? (sighs) No one following Jesus can continue to live in their former manner of life. You know, many people, I think, want the life of Jesus, but they're not willing to adopt the lifestyle. They, we, we, we read about what Jesus does. We know that it's there for us as well. We know it's something that's available for us. We want it. We believe. I believe Jesus heals. I believe he saves. I believe that people get set free. I believe God is good. I believe all of these things, and I want to see it in my life. And I think a lot of you do too. You want to see Jesus move in your life. You want to see him move through you in power. But I want to encourage you right now that to see the life of Jesus come out of you, you need to adopt the lifestyle. Because so many people, I, I'm not seeing breakthrough right now and I'm believing for it, but you know, God's not doing it. I just don't see him moving. When was the last time you fasted? My whole life is crazy. I'm overwhelmed. When was the last time you took a Sabbath and rested? You're, mm. I've got to be nice too though, right? Yeah, no. uh, <laughs> I want to make sure I'm just, I want to say this right here. Your life is a byproduct of your lifestyle. Right? The fruit coming out of my life is a byproduct of the lifestyle I am choosing to live. If I want to see the life of Jesus, I need to start following his life, what he did. You know, there are so many things that Jesus did that have become foreign to us nowadays. There are so many things that he did that I think a lot of us would almost chuckle and laugh at because we're like, well, that maybe worked for him back then, but, but we're, we're in a different place now. You know, I, we're, we're busier now. We have more going on. No, no. I, I want to tell you that the truths of the Bible do not change based off of the era you're living in. They are eternal. And Jesus, the Father, gave you certain keys so that you can have a life filled with health and wholeness. So that you can have a life filled with strength and victory. And I want to encourage you here that part of what this series really is about is us going, this is the way. We're saying this is the lifestyle that Jesus lived. For true transformation, we're going to adopt the lifestyle and see the life come out of it. We're going to abide with him and see it come out. I'm going to give you some practicals here. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to give you some practicals here. One of the ways that we abide. How many of you like practicals? Anyone? Okay, only half of you. Okay, great. Okay, I know when I can leave it or not. My wife loves practicals. She's like, don't just preach at me. Give me something. Make it applicable, right? So I'm going to give you some really basic practicals here. So one of the ways you abide is by resting. 
Whew. What a season to talk about resting, right? How many of you know we got Christmas right around the corner, right? It's a week away. It's almost here, right? And you're going to probably thinking, how dare you talk to me about rest? Do you know everything I have going on? Do you know how many Christmas parties, shopping, wrapping, people I'm hosting? Yeah, I know, right? But one of the ways that we practice abiding is by resting. Psalms 91, 1 through 2 says, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Whoever dwells, that's the same idea as what we've been talking about with abiding. It's to tarry, to remain, to stay. That whoever abides in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. That one, this, this works in two ways, dual ways. First off, when I abide with him, he gives me rest. He gives my soul rest. He allows me to rest. But here's the thing, right? He can give you all the options. Are you accepting the rest that he's giving you? Are you saying, yes, I want to partner with the rest you are encouraging me to step into? Do you know that Jesus rested? Do you you know that? It might be crazy to some of you, but yes. Jesus so often went away and rested. He went to the secret place. He went to the deserted place. So often he took time to pull away even from his disciples and go and spend time alone. Do you know that God rested? Yeah, I mean, he created everything, but he took a day. He rested, right? Do you know that Jesus also encouraged his disciples to rest? I don't think you have this scripture, guys, but I'm going to read it. Mark 6, 30 through 32. It goes, the apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going, they did not even have a chance to eat. So he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. When did we think, when did we adopt the idea that busyness or doing more things is more valuable than rest? When did we begin to adopt the belief that we didn't need rest? Some of you have had the belief that rest is laziness. That's a lie. Some of you have had the belief that if I rest, I'm going to be, it's a performance-based thing, right? I, mean, I feel that a little bit as a pastor, right? If I take time and go away for a weekend and I'm not here and you all see me, how many comments am I going to get, right? You know, I, I, I enjoy being busy. I thrive off of some level of busyness in my life, okay? I mean, we went through a period of time where I was working almost 80 hours a week. I loved it. It was wonderful, you know, did it for a couple years, then started, you know, reach the end of it. Like, I enjoy it. But even in the busiest times of my life, I've always known how to rest. I've always known how to pull away to the secret place to connect with him. Can I, I encourage you right now, one of the ways you practice abiding is learning how to rest. Learning how to quiet your heart, quiet your mind, quiet the world around you. That in rest, you connect with him. One of the things we do on Saturday mornings is we make it family day. So we try not to focus on our phones at all. We try to put them away. Try not to focus on devices to the best of our ability. We try to go to the park. We try to go out and get breakfast or make it at home. And as a family, me, Steph, and Caden, we just rest. You know, it's one of the most beautiful times of the entire week. When we rest. Can I, can, I, can I encourage you? Can I implore you right now? You have permission to rest. You have permission to abide with him. Do not let busyness be the thing that controls your life. In this holiday season, oof, don't get mad at me. In this holiday season, do not let busyness be the thing that dictates what level of rest you get. Take time. Take time to focus on him. I I can't help but think of um, Luke 10, 39 through 40. I think you got this one. 
when I think of this. And it's about Mary and Martha, right? It's a really common story. We've all heard it. I'm not here to dig on Martha. I know half of you love her. She's great, okay? So I'm not here to take sides in this battle of who's right, who's wrong. But I want to focus on what Jesus said, okay, in this. So it goes, she had a sister called Mary, whom sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. There was a lot of preparations right now to be made. Come on, anybody? I haven't even started rapping yet. I've bought stuff. I haven't started rapping yet. Thank you, Lord. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my... He took it from me. Don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Yeah? All right, this is going slow. You're probably trying to go according. I paused and I made a joke and then we, we lost our timing. That's probably what happened right now. Well, it'll pop up here in a second, right? And so then what, what does the Lord say to her, right? He goes, why aren't you helping me? helping me? He goes, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Mary was just resting at the feet of Jesus. She was just abiding, spending time in his presence. Can I encourage you? The holiday season is beautiful. It's wonderful. I love it. Well, I'm learning to love it. Having a kid has really made me fall in love with it in a different way, right? Because it's all new to him, and it's just wonderful to experience. But I want to encourage you. Some things, many things, almost all things will be taken away. But spending time to rest with Jesus is something that is eternal. It is something that will last. And just as we see Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, sitting down at the feet of her Savior, taking time to just abide with him, you this season, you this next year, are called to abide with Christ, to take time to rest, to take time to connect. There is always something to do, right? Come on. I don't know. I, I, I don't know many people who have tons of free time in their lives who are like sitting down and they're like, all right, I got 100 hours of free time. I don't know what. No, no. Most people I know are fairly busy. And our world encourages it, right? It's encouraged that even if you aren't doing something, you should be posting something on social media so people know that you are doing something, right? Like, like there's a certain level of busyness that is encouraged in this day and age. But, but I want to encourage you. I want to implore you that when you rest, when you take time to be in the shadow of the Almighty, something happens. When you take time to connect with Jesus, to abide in his presence, to just sit at his feet, something will happen in your heart and your life. And, and I'm not saying that you always, to, to give you a practical, sometimes this happens while you're just driving in the car. Amen. You're by yourself. You're driving to work. Take time to abide. My, my wife tells me that dishes is when she practices this, right? Like she's washing dishes. The kid's asleep. I'm, I'm off doing whatever. She takes time to abide while cleaning the dishes. She takes time to pray, takes time to thank the Lord for what he's doing. In the morning, you know, when, when Caden's eating his breakfast, or maybe it's when I'm in the shower, I can take time right then. I, I want to encourage you. I'm, I'm not asking you to, you know, knock out half your schedule. I'm asking you to look at the things you're doing and say, how do I spend time at his feet? How do I spend time connecting? And the, the final thing I want to touch on here is, that we practice abiding by being aware of the presence of God. Just an awareness. Do you understand what I mean by awareness? You know, Moses makes this statement in Exodus uh, 33, 15 through 16. He says that if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? You know, this cry, do not send us. Moses had an awareness of the presence of God. He had an awareness that the presence of God actually distinguishes you. It actually makes you stick out. You can't hide with Jesus. And he, he makes a statement, do not send us away. What is your level of awareness when it comes to the presence of God on your life? 
Here, I'm going I'm to give you an example, right? If I came to Chantel and I go, hey, here is $5. Keep this in your pocket for the entire week and it's yours. Woohoo! Yeah, woohoo! Yeah, so happy, right? Is she going to, I mean, she might try. Maybe she'll make it for the first day or two, right? She'll probably get distracted. She, she probably won't think about it because, you know, it's, it's $5. If I come to Chantel, though, and I say, hey, here's a diamond that I just found. Uh, they're estimated to be worth $4.5 million. Um, put it in your pocket, and if you keep it there for the whole week without losing it, going anywhere, it's yours. How many of you know her level of awareness? <laughs> like, you're going to walk near her, and she's going to be like, what are you doing? Stop right there. No, like, she is going to be so aware of everything. She's going to sit down and be like, yes, it's still there. Right? She's going to get in the car and be like, it didn't fall out of my pocket. I'm good to go. Right? I mean, maybe it's even going to, you know, go to bed with her. She's going to sleep. Like, her level of awareness will be so heightened. You have something worth more than anything else in the entire world. You have something with more value than anything else in the whole world. And that is called the presence of God. God is going with you. Do you treat his presence like a $5 bill or like a pearl of great price? Do you take time to be aware of what he's doing when you're going about your day? Do you have an awareness for the things that he's, t- the things that he's saying, the things that he's doing? Dallas Willard says the first and most basic thing we can do and must is to keep God before our minds. This is the fundamental secret of caring for our souls. Our part in thus practicing the presence of God is to direct and redirect our minds constantly to him. In the early time of our practicing, we we may well be challenged by our burdensome habits of dwelling on things less than God. But these are habits, not the law of gravity, and can be broken. A new, grace-filled habit will replace the former one as we take intentional steps toward keeping God before us. Soon our minds will return to God as the needle of a compass constantly returns north. If God is the great longing of our souls, he will become the pole star of our inward beings. Love that quote. I think it's just, it's a gorgeous quote. I'll I'll give it to Elaine and have her post it. So if you want to copy it or look at it, you can. But just the very thought, the very practice of God, I want you to be the one that directs me. I want you to be the one that pulls me. And I'm going to start by just asking myself, what are you doing in this moment? I want to tell you something. When you practice the awareness of his presence, it changes everything. When you are aware, I've told you lots of stories about my little guy, right? How he changes when he knows who's going with him. Do you remember me telling you that? Yeah. It changes when we know who is with us, right? In, in any circumstance we're in, in, in anywhere we go. I mean, I, I went and visited this business here in town recently, and I uh, walked through the front door with, with my little guy, you know, with me. And we came in, and the people at the desk were like, hi, welcome. And I'm like, hey, you know, what's up? How are you? And they're like, good. Can we help you? You know, because this isn't like really an office that lets people come in a lot. And I'm here with Caden, and we're like, oh, yeah, we're visiting someone. And we were there to see their office manager, who is my sister-in-law, right? And so we go, we see her, we say hi, and she goes, does Caden want to come back to the office and meet everybody? And I'm like, sure, why not? You know, give it a go. He might decide. He does this thing now where he he hides behind my leg, and he goes, I want to be shy. And I'm like... (laughs) Okay, odd choice, but, you know, you do you right now, right? Like, you, you want to be shy, you go for it. But, but he was feeling kind of adventurous, and she bribed him with chocolate. And that goes a long way. And so, you know, so we went out, we went back into the office, I mean, into where their offices are, and there's all these cubicles, and just we're meeting people and saying hi, right? I would never walk into that office and just walk back there, right? I would never just walk into someone's office and just kind of be like, hey, here I am. But because the office manager is going with me, I understand there's a level of authority that's going with me as well, right? I understand that the doors I cannot open, she can open. I understand the people I would not get to talk to normally, she can help me talk to them. I understand that she can even get a three-year-old through the door, right? Do you understand that when you are aware of the presence that is going with you, there is no door that cannot be opened? Do you understand that when you are aware of the presence of God going with you, all of a sudden, things that you once feared, you realize are not as scary as they used to be. 
Do you understand that when you have an awareness of the presence of God, of who is going with you, then you have the ability to partner with hope for impossible situations? I, I want to encourage you right now. There are not impossible situations, right? Because with God, we know all things are possible. So what there, what's going on right now in your life is that you need to partner with the presence, you need to be so aware of the presence that as soon as anything counter to the word of God over your life shows up, you go, no, I, I'm not even going to entertain that thought and idea. Practicing the awareness of the presence is because I know that if I am aware of who is going with me, nothing can stop me. No sickness can stop me. No, yeah, thank you. Ooh, that was a good throw though. Pause really quick. It's been a while, right? We throw shoes here. Not at the person normally. That was a little, you know. We do it as like an amen. So if a shoe comes slide up on stage, it's like someone saying, praise the Lord, amen. We believe it. So it's a compliment. I wasn't just almost killed, right? So, right? But, but the, the biggest thing for all of us, always, constantly, right, is my awareness. Am I practicing the awareness of the kingdom of God to know that there is freedom? You know, and he, like I said, with Caden, right, the fact that we were with the office manager changed the level of access he was allowed to have, yeah. right? He, he got to go do things even. You know that kids have the same level of access to the kingdom as you do? Come on. We, we don't believe in a junior Holy Spirit. We believe that the Spirit of God is the same for each and every person. And there are things for you. There are things for me. There are things for our children that are waiting to be discovered when you allow yourself to be aware of what God is doing. And I'm going to tell you something. Being aware of his presence is not always the most comfortable thing. It's not always convenient. Do you know that you know, Jesus isn't always convenient? Right? Sometimes I'm feeling, I'm aware of his presence, and I feel like he wants me to go talk to somebody. And I'm, I'm thinking of, wow, yeah, that's cool, Jesus. But I got shopping to do. I got a little three-year-old who hasn't eaten yet. Like, it's a great idea, but maybe you should have tried it some other time. Wow, I'm just being too real for you. That's cool, though. Uh, you know, right? Like, it is not always convenient. But when you allow yourself to be aware, to move where he goes, there is nothing that does not bow to his name. Can you stand to your feet with me? <clears throat> uh, I want to ask the prayer team to come up here on the left side. Healing prayer team over here on my right. I want to encourage you if you need healing prayer for anything in your body. We want to pray for you. There's people over here. I, I want to say this too, right? If you, know, if you are standing in the gap for someone, if you are believing for someone in your life to be healed, these people would still love to pray with you. They will walk with you. They will stand in the gap with you. And I got these other people over here who also would love to pray for healing. If you need a prophetic word, they would love to go and knock on the gates of heaven and say, okay, Lord, what are you saying right now? And if you just need prayer for anything, hey, prayer works. Never think my thing is too small to go get prayer for. Come on, look at your neighbor and say it's not too small. Not too small. Nothing in your life is too small to take to Jesus. Come on. So if you need prayer for anything, these guys would love to pray for you. And finally, if you are a guest or a visitor, we would love to connect with you. Say hi. In the very back at our info station, Bro Drew and Cheryl are going to be there. They would love to give you a gift and just connect with you. I'm going to pray right now. It's going to be good. Trust me. Um, I'm going to pray right now. And I just want to encourage you. We've been, we're practicing abiding. I encourage you to take five minutes, ten minutes last week. Try to up it a little bit this week. But I want you to practice your awareness of the presence. When you walk into that family gathering, be aware of his presence. When you waited last minute and you walk into the store and it's a madhouse, that's okay. You got Jesus going with you. You're going to not partner with stress and anger. You're going to go, okay, maybe there's actually an opportunity here for God to move. Come on. So put out your hands if you're comfortable right now. Lord, we ask right now, that you would increase our awareness of your presence, that you would increase our awareness of your kingdom, that you would increase our awareness of what you are doing. We want to abide with you. We want to be connected to you. So right now, we make the choice to step into abiding by partnering with rest and awareness this week, Lord, that we will take time to sit at your feet. We will take time to rest, and we will take time to connect with you. 
We declare right now that no circumstance, Father, no family gathering, no holiday, nothing in our lives is greater than Jesus. And so we say right now, Lord, that everything must bow to you. Come on. We praise you. We love you. Set our hearts on fire. In your name, amen.